Welcome, welcome. Hola, bienvenidos. It's really, uh, and I know the majority of people here tonight speak one, two, three languages or even more. So we're going to stick to English just to keep it simple. But uh, when you're networking, speak in any language you want. So the, the important thing is to have fun. We're very excited because this is our third year in a row that we do celebrating Latinx in, in gaming. And probably you're going to notice there's more people this year, new faces, more countries. And we, every year we've grown 2x. That means the event doubles in terms of registration. So we're very happy. We're excited about that because based on, on the feedback you gave us last year, um, there, there were a lot of elements that we considered to make the event not only bigger, but have uh, more dynamic content. So I'm going to give you kind of an overview of what we're going to have. If you remember, who's, who, who's uh, here for the first time? Can you raise your hand? OK, about half of the room. So the big change this year is we used to have presentations one after the other. But we got into a situation where we had more speakers than time. So instead of doing this like a five-hour event, we're going to have two panels. So I'm really happy and proud to announce that our first panel is called Latinas in Gaming. We have a fantastic group of colleagues from the industry, from Xbox and outside the industry as well, from EA, Cartoon Network, that are going to share with you their journey in the industry. And our second panel is going to be about the role of Latinx in game development. And game development, probably it's a little bit of a stretch because it's more than just writing, sitting down and coding the game. It's more about the concept, how I create the art, how I design the game, how I commercialize the game. And I'm pretty sure uh, that's going to resonate with a lot of you that are doing that or are curious to do that or are looking for partnerships or ideas or support to get into that business. So with that, I also want to say that this year we have over 20 countries represented in registrations, which is fantastic. That's amazing. If you think about it, it's a lot of diversity, not only in terms of geographies, languages, but also culturally. And that resonates very well with the spirit of the event, which is celebrating Latinx in gaming. The other big change that we did is we changed our, the name of, of the team of the event. So we used to be Latinos in Gaming. And in order to reflect the values that we have within Xbox, we thought, OK, we need to have an X in the name. And we came up with a really cool name, which is Latinx name, which is obviously not, re not representing or, or, or doesn't mean Xbox is really representing diversity and inclusion and variety of um, people. And this event is about people. So I really encourage you to have fun, meet people that you don't know, and who knows, that may be the next big thing for your team, for your company, for your studio. So with that, I want to give special thanks to all the leadership team at Xbox, starting with Phil Spencer, Many of you saw him uh, in, in past events. He continues to be uh, a fundamental supporter of this team. And without him and the leadership team, uh, this type of events wouldn't be possible. So please give them a big round of applause to the uh, leadership team at Xbox. <laughs> Secondly, I want to thank all the volunteers that are here from Microsoft because it takes a village to have an event like this. So uh, thank you very much. The Gaming for Everyone team, Benjamin, Jessica, Katie Joe for your support. And we are really thankful for um, what you guys uh, help us with. So please, big round of applause. <laughs> I also want to recognize other teams that 
probably you've seen them all around, but you don't know their names. And I think it's one of the coolest teams that we have in-house. So thanks to James and team with the Media Lab team that are helping us as well with video and, and doing cool stuff. I, I really love working with, with those guys. So thank you. Thank you very much. And Team Xbox Latinx, it's a group of people that obviously care about the community, internal and external to Microsoft. So I, I would like them to stand up or raise their hands because they put a lot of work and energy to also make this event happen. So I'm going to introduce you guys, Guillermo Vasquez, <laughs> Fernando Reyes, We have two Fernandos now, Fernando Silva. Where's Fernando Silva? He's giving hugs. <laughs> we have Gabby Ponce. Crystal Sanchez. And Jorge Lopez de Luna, uh, that it's also very committed, some of you know him. He was here a couple of events ago. At the last event he was at registration, this time he couldn't make it, but he's in, in Redmond, and uh, he's gonna watch this event later, so Jorge as well. And also, thank you very much to the staff of Mina Gallery for uh, helping us make this event a, a nice event. And with that, I just want to uh, show you guys a quick recap of the event last year. So I may need the clicker. Oh, you got it. And this is what we had last year at uh, Hotel Zeta. Muy buenas noches, bienvenidos. Welcome, everyone, to the second Latinos in Gaming event. Actually, my father, uh, it took three games to understand that I was living doing video games. I didn't need to change who I was or try to personify someone that I was not. As you can see, all dudes. Uh, but this is about to change. This is a matter of time. I promise. Like, I had all these different types, all these different dreams. But by the way, this picture is here just for cuteness, right? <laughs> Having events like this really help to foster the people, to foster the community, and having a space and a time to share what they are doing and to share the great games that they are producing. Excellent. So probably uh, not many people have seen this video before, so we thought it would be cool to, to show you that. And that's uh, work of our Media Lab team. Before we shift gears, I also, uh, probably many of you remember Dave McCarthy. He still continues to be very involved with Gaming for Everyone. He's part of the leadership team. However, this year, it's a pleasure for me to introduce our new executive sponsor, which also um, is very committed. He's going to be very involved with the community. He's a veteran of Microsoft. He joined Microsoft uh, in 1999. He's originally from Oregon. And it's, it's been really a pleasure to get his thoughts, his vibe on how he um, feels the, the, the opportunity and commitment to the uh, community can be internally and externally. So, I'm also very happy about that. And without any further ado, I would like to introduce Mike Ibarra, Corporate Vice President at Xbox. Thank you. Well, I have to say, it is incredible to see the number of people here. I was at the event last year and this year, the momentum, the great work that the whole team has done is really incredible to see. Uh, I am very proud to be the exec sponsor uh, many people don't know who the heck I am. I'll give a quick background and I'll make it short. Uh, 
as uh, Esteban said, I've been with the company for 18 years. My father was born in uh, northern Mexico. He met my mother in Southern California, uh, which is where I was born. Funny story about my family. My son's 14. He's on his seventh year of Spanish. My wife speaks Spanish. My parents speak Spanish. I don't speak Spanish. And so I am shamed daily in my house. Trust me, my 14-year-old, he's the best at it. We vacation in Mexico quite often, and he does all the ordering, and he looks at me, and he just shakes my head. Dad, what are you doing? <laughs> so I've got to work on that. Um, you know, diversity and inclusion is part of who we are in Team Xbox. And one of the things as part of the leadership team that I am most proud of is the commitment that not only the leadership team has, but frankly, it's driven by the employees. Every single person uh, that works creates events and opportunities like this. And I am committed to being as dedicated to this uh, and helping everyone understand the gaming industry because it's that inclusion and diversity that will help us broaden the opportunity for everybody to be not only contribute in the industry, but to consume the amazing and awesome entertainment that we create collectively in the industry. I'll be here uh, all night. Please stop by, say hi, introduce yourself. I would love to meet everyone. Thank you, and let's make this event awesome. Thank you, Mike. And I said, hey, Mike, do you want to have us your name in Spanish? And he said, no. Because uh, we did that a few years ago with uh, Phil. We have the uh, equivalent name in Spanish and with Dave. But no, I, I think uh, Mike is perfectly common, and Ibarra, of course, is perfectly common in, in, in Latin America. So, before we uh, shift gears and start the content part of the event, I also want to say thank you very much to our friends from Electronic Arts. Are here. We have uh, people from EA, and we collaborate with EA on many fronts. But they also have a, a Latino group over there, and we we have a, a, a close contact. We're talking about okay, how we can support the industry, how we can support the community from a Latino perspective. So um, you're gonna see people from Electronic Arts in the panel as well. They brought a, a little bit of uh, swag as well. So thank you very much, guys. Um, Lusa, she's the one. Uh, driving this, and uh, it, it's been a pleasure talking with them as well. All right, so it's going to be half and half, and what do I mean by that? Half of the event today is going to be presentations, panels, speakers, and the other half is just going to be mingling, networking, schmoozing. So this is an event for you. Thank you very much for your energy, for your passion, for making it happen, for your feedback. There's a survey that we have for this event, and the survey is really the, the glue, the blood, the, the energy to make the next event happen. By the way, who wants us to do an event next year? Please fill out the survey, tell us what you think, tell us uh, what things we can do to make it even better, make it more fun, which other events in the industry you would like to see this team participating, supporting, and that will help us fine tune and tweak it as needed. So with that, I'm gonna shift gears, uh, hand this over to Fer, who's gonna be our Master of Ceremonies tonight. Fer. Thank you, Esteban. Uh, how are you guys doing? Are you happy? Good. Uh, I want to introduce to uh, the first panel of the night. I'm very excited about this one because uh, the moderator is a very good friend of mine. and I think she's one of the most amazing uh, persons I have ever worked with. Uh, she's a program manager at Xbox. Uh, she builds social experiences for gamers to make meaningful connections with other players. Originally from Southern California, she graduated with a degree in computer science from UC San Diego. 
As a new gamer, her work and co-workers at Xbox have taught her the value of games and the profound impact that they can have on people's lives. She has since combined her passions for culture, art, and technology as a producer for B Collective, a non-profit game studio focused on interactive streaming games with 100% of revenue going to charity. As a leader of the Latinos in game community, she hopes to help others navigate the gaming industry so they too can share their stories. So please help me welcome Gabi Ponce. Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say thank you again for coming to our event. This is my first time at GDC. You guys are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yes, we're having the Latinas in Gaming panel today. And joining us, we have uh, Cristina Ramirez, Cristi, uh, from EA. Uh, Crystal Sanchez from Xbox. And last but not least, we have Caroline Guevara from Cartoon Network. Thank you. Take a seat. All right, so thank you three for coming. You're welcome. This is really exciting. Yeah. I'm super pumped. Can't wait to ask you all the questions. Oh, gosh. Uh, so why don't we start off by having each of you tell us a little bit about yourselves and what you do at your respective companies. Start yeah, whoever. Christy, whoever. Oh, Jump in. Um, hi, my name is Christy Ramirez. Um, I am a program manager at Electronic Arts, uh, where I've been there for about six years now. Um, so I work on our EA Access program, which is our subscription through the Xbox, um, where we give people uh, games for a vault and uh, free trials to all of our brand new games. Thanks. Hi everyone, my name is Crystal Sanchez. I'm a principal program manager at Xbox. I've been there for a little over a year, but I spent 12 years before that at EA, and I started in game development. Um, and prior to that, a little small startup company, game startup company in uh, Santa Cruz. And my first title was Leisure Suit Larry on the Nokia Engage. Oh, wow. So that was a, quite an experience <laughs> into gaming. Wow. Um, hey, everyone. I'm Caroline Guevara. I'm a producer for Cartoon Network Mobile Games. Um, we worked on, well, like I said, mobile games and web games uh, with the lovable, quirky <laughs> characters of Cartoon Network, everything from Gumball to Steven Universe and uh, Adventure Time. Um, what, what else? Uh, I've been there for about three years now. Um, I love what I do. I get to see all the cartoons before they come out. Um, <laughs> I'm jealous. Awesome. Um, and I just have fun just being a producer and just meeting like a whole bunch of great indie developers along the way. Yeah. Awesome. Well, welcome. Thank you again for coming. Um, so it sounds like all of you are some sort of project management role in your, in your companies. Yeah. Uh, but I suspect that each of you didn't get there the same way. So how did you all break into the gaming industry? Oh, well, OK, me again. Um, <laughs> uh, well, um, I, I loved video games from a young age. Um, my mom used to bring home Atari games. Uh, she worked at AMD. Um, and, yes. and I thought that that was actually her job, but it wasn't. Um, so I, I did always love gaming. Um, I actually started out in web development. Um, so I learned to code, made, made websites for a whole bunch of people. I had my own small business for a little while where I made mm. websites for bands, because that's what I really like to do. Um, I went back to school, uh, got a degree in marketing, and um, ended up in e-commerce, um, mm. which is sort of the path that I've been following is e-commerce. Um, and after I graduated with my MBA a couple years ago, I got promoted into this program management job where I've been, uh, and I love it. I work with uh, a diverse group of people and um, you know, work on exciting products. So it's very exciting. Awesome. Um, so I actually, my degree is from uh, UC Davis, so I'm a native Californian, from the, actually from the Bay Area. And yes, <laughs> from San Jose. Uh, but I actually got my degree in Chicano Studies. So I originally planned to be a professor uh, and do sociology and social work, because that really was my passion when I was, you know, younger. Uh, and did a bunch of startups, actually. So I kind of took a very, like, I don't know, very interesting way to get to games. So I did some finance work, I did some IT consulting, and then I moved back to the Bay and um, was recruited by a VP of engineering who later went on to start a um, game company in Santa Cruz, California. Uh, and he wanted me to come work for him right away, and I said, eh, when you can afford me, then I'll come. So it took him a couple of years. So number one, lesson, know your value. Uh, so it took him a couple of years to get there, uh, and 
thankfully, like there were a lot of folks that worked at that studio in Santa Cruz that I had worked with in my previous startup. Um, so at the time, we were doing some work with Nokia on mobile, and we're also doing a lot of work for EA. So when the studio shut down six months after I started there, uh, which was a little bit scary as a, as a mother and, you know, with an expensive home in the Santa Cruz Mountains, um, EA came calling and they pretty much cherry picked everybody that they wanted. And I started my career at EA and in game development, I've done a bunch of really cool things, um, including partnership dev developer relations. I've worked on Rock Band. I've worked on The Sims, managing artists. I've worked in, on The Godfather, managing engineers. So I'm super passionate about this industry. I got, in some ways, a little bit lucky, right? Like, you're kind of like, I was just in the right place at the right time. Um, but I love making games and working with developers. And over time, I've learned that operations is really my thing. Um, so actually, one of my very first informational interviews at Xbox was with Mikey Barra. And thanks to him, I'm here now at <laughs> Xbox. So Mike has been a super champion of mine, and I'm, I'm really grateful to be part of such an incredible team at Xbox. Probably like some of the most smartest people that I've ever worked in, with in my career. So yeah. Um, for myself, uh, well, from the DC, like Northern Virginia metropolitan area, um, I went to George Mason University uh, for a degree in computer game design. I actually wanted to go into psychology first, which I don't know why, but well, here I am now. <laughs> um, I think at the time it was just like a lot of my friends would always come to me for problems, to, like help squash them out, which is basically production. Um, so I went through that got to the end of you know, my undergraduate career, realized that I still need more experience. So I did my master's up in Philly, um, in Philadelphia, um, at Drexel University, where I got my master's in digital media. And that's where I really started to like, look into a lot of games that um, you know, would just like, trigger you know, just like emotions, so like empathy, mm -hmm. and just, like, just really like, you know, just, uh, get, like, just get to you, basically, on such an emotional level. Um, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot through doing a lot of side projects, like with my professors, doing grant research projects. Um, and I took a real big interest in um, like educational games. Thank you. Um, and so I thought I was going to go into that direction. I started looking for like games for change, kind of like openings and stuff like that. And then I happened to stumble upon the T3 program at Turner, which is basically an 11 month like long internship uh, is kind of the best way I can describe it, where they're teaching you you know, how to be a producer, basically. Teaching you the ropes of it, like, you know, milestones from the green light process to gold master to everything in between development, looking at art, looking at, you know, um, or managing, like, your, your little team with your indie developer. Um, and so from then on, I interviewed, and I said, why not? It's Cartoon Network, and we just do it, go for it, because you never know, which I think I tell everybody now, like, you never know if you don't try. So just, even if it seems like out of reach, just go and just apply for it, because you never know. Um, and then fast forward three years later, here I am now as a full-time producer for Cartoon Network. It's awesome. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Killing it. Cartoon Network. <laughs> Killing it. Right on. <laughs> awesome. Wow, like, those journeys sound intense <laughs> to me, all of them. Like, man, you did all of that stuff, and you're still alive? That's amazing. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, when I get stuck in those kinds of situations where I'm like, all right, this is going to be super hard. How am I going to get through this? I mean, I have my own internal strength, but that only goes so far. So whenever I get stuck in that, I try to look for other people who can help guide me and tell me, all right, so let's compare notes here. Um, what kinds of role models or mentors helped you along the way, if any, um, to get you through all of those times? And how did they help you? Ooh, um, I think for myself, it was definitely my thesis advisor. Um, she's, a, she's definitely a tough cookie. Um, she would <laughs> rip apart my thesis. I mean, rip it apart. Just like, you need to rewrite this chapter completely. Um, so, you know, there was a little bit of self-dread for that. But it, it taught me to just, like, persevere and just, like, just really take critiques, you know? Mm -hmm. And she herself, like also being like an immigrant um, from, from China, like she had to go through her own loops and hoops and loops and everything to like be where she was as like a tenure professor, like at Drexel and just, you know, just like prove her worth and get all these like grants and research and money like for the school and for the program. And um, I, I looked up to her because I didn't really have anybody else to look up to in my undergraduate career, or even anybody else outside my career, or sorry, on my graduate career, besides like my sister and like my family, you know, who have had their own journeys as well. So I, I would definitely say my thesis advisor, she would, um, she would definitely keep pushing me to like do better, 
don't do mediocre, like don't settle for mediocre and just like go for what you believe, like, like you know, what's worth it basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so actually some of my biggest champions and mentors have been men. Um, so when I started in the gaming, uh, I'd say probably at EA is where I've had the longest, you know, stay. But the person that re that hired me, um, sight unseen, so we actually had an interview over the phone. He's like, "Okay, great. When can you start?" And he passed away unfortunately a couple of years ago. And he ran EA Partners and did a lot of really amazing things at EA, including launching Origin, the PC storefront. Um, oh. David Martini. Yeah, and so he, you know, we would fight a lot. I mean, he was Italian, so he's very passionate, and I'm super passionate <laughs> as a Latino woman. Um, but he always, like, respected my opinion, and I'm a huge believer in teams and culture and people. So, you know, yes, I'm a kind of a type A personality, so project management and program management kind of like, fits right in there for me. <laughs> um, yeah, right? Exactly. I like being in control. Um, and I kind of pursued the development director path um, at EA, uh, but so he was very instrumental in like getting me to try things and I've always been a super risk taker. And now at this point in my career, what I love about Team Xbox and what I love being, um, why I love being there is my focus today and a lot of my free time is about mentoring women and inspiring women. Um, I have a 20 year old daughter who's a student at Santa Clara University and okay. she's an athlete, Sorry. yes. And she's also um, an engineering major. So she's always like gone to work with me and you know, she's like, mom, your job is so boring. All you do is sit in meetings all day. But like not really <laughs> understanding that's also like part of production. And um, then just kind of working through the creative process. So I respect that about game development. Um, I feel super fortunate to be around all these people that have different perspectives. And really, like, I feel like being in, in gaming and being in interactive inter entertainment is the coolest job in the world. Like, we get to create new experiences that no one's ever experienced before. And sure, I may like looking, be looking at servers or data and kind of, you know, informing like how we build the ne next best, best thing, but I couldn't ask for a better job and a better time in my career to give back and inspire young women, women of color, to stick with it. And the, we've got great champions in our men too. So I definitely am all about like, let's not alienate the men, let's educate them through the process. And I think for me, thankfully, I've had a really great experience in gaming. Mm -hmm. So I'm super proud to be part of it. Um, Dimar was the head of origin when I started. Yep. started there, so, yeah. Um, I would say, um, my family, mostly my mom, have been um, my greatest source of inspiration. Um, I, I was pretty lucky. Um, I mentioned my mom earlier. She, um, she started in semiconductors back in the 70s. Um, and actually, she just retired this past year. Um, but yeah, um, I, she's fantastic. Um, she always brought home like the the Mac, the little portable Macs. I don't know if many of you are old enough to remember <laughs> these, but I thought it was so cool because I could type my book reports, and I was like, oh, do that. Um, yeah, she always you know pushed me hard. Um, you know, maybe go, you know go to school and get A's and all that fun stuff, and you know just push me to do uh, my best, but not only my best, but what I love to do. Um, so I yeah, she I think she's my greatest source of inspiration. Um, I, you know, I think that, you know, my family as a whole is, is actually very technical. Um, my aunt worked for NASA and actually retired wow. from IBM. Um, I have an uncle who recently retired from GE. Uh, somebody else, that, uh, one of my other uncles uh, works in uh, the telecom system in Guatemala and like designed a whole bunch of that. Uh -huh. So I always had these role models around, so I never, thought that, you know, I always thought technology, yeah, that's totally an option. So, you know, it was really important. To, it's important to me once I actually started going to college and noticed, you know, the terrible statistics of, you know, Latinos in, in technology and stuff and going like, oh, hey, <laughs> we got to do something about this. Um, and, you know, just realizing that not everybody had the same background and wanting to give back to, you know, in whatever way I could. If, it, if it's a tiny bit of inspiration, then, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of backgrounds, so when I started exploring the games industry, because I didn't grow up playing games, um, so really when I started working at Xbox and learning about the games <laughs> industry, I, like, my first thoughts were, okay, if I wanted to work on a game, I would need to be an artist, a designer, or a programmer. Now I know that's not the case. 
Um, so what kinds of opportunities do you know about that exist for people who come from other types of disciplines? Um, everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything. Right. Um, yeah, come to the gaming industry. I mean, we are a business. Um, we need everything to run. We need finance, accounting, lawyers, um, project managers like us, um, uh, coders, so data entry too, uh, QA, lots of testing. Um, strategy, event planners. I don't know. What else? Yeah, no, <laughs> I so think many. that, that yeah, covers I think, a lot. Yeah, she, she covered everything. And I think also I feel like the beauty of our industry is like you don't really have to be stuck entirely in one thing. Mm -hmm. Like mm. there's a lot of opportunity to like kind of grow and kind of, you know, maybe sit in on an art meeting or a creative meeting, you know, just like learn a little bit from each other so like you, you fully understand the whole like game process, which yeah. is something that I'm doing like within like my group. I have like a, like a side med, like apprenticeship with my art director going on, like mm. helping like building up like my, my sketchbook and like my technique and whatnot. So like if you, you know, find yourself like in the gaming industry and like just wanting to learn more, like ask your cube mate, ask, you know, art group or ask the programming group like, hey, can I sit in on a meeting? Can I sit in, like, chat you for a couple of hours, minutes, what have you, and just learn, soak it all in? Yeah, I think it's also, like, important to, there's some degree of, like, when you're managing your career to, like, take a risk. And for me, like, I also, like, you had a very interesting background. Like, I grew up in foster care, and I had a lot of mentors, actually, I think, growing up in my life. And that, that never stopped me, right? So being super organized and coming into the gaming industry, just like knowing that I wanted to be able to deliver and execute, like I've never been afraid to get my hands dirty. And back in the days when I started at EA, they were being sued um, for overworking their employees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was the year of EA spouse. So I had a unique opportunity as a program manager to come in and help you know, build schedules. And I remember at that time fighting a lot with producers or having intellectual discourse, I'll say, <laughs> with producers and DDs about, oh, you cannot impede the create creative process by putting schedules. And I said, but you can't burn your people to death either because creativity needs time to incubate, right? You need time to rest, you need time to sleep. And so I applaud EA at that time for bringing a lot of people from outside of the industry. So I was part of that outside of the industry wave mm -hmm. that came in. So I would say for those of you that are looking at careers that are maybe not as not technical. Yeah. I mean, a woman with Chicano studies making games is kind of like crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I was super, I think you have to be passionate about what you do. I think you have to be very organized, be willing to take risks sometimes, mm -hmm. and also just like hold steadfastly to your values and your beliefs. Like it is true, like the si se puede mantra, like if you can do it, you can do it. So I think um, I try to instill that same value system in my daughter. Um, so I would say it's that, like be diligent and do quality work. Like at the end of the day, it's the output and the quality of your reputation, the work that you produce, how collaborative you are with your teammates. All of those things matter when you're making a game or creating a live service or creating a platform, however you want to think about your role in gaming. Um, I think those things are like really important. Just have your core values. Uh, to, to jump off that, um, it's also important to know that you can make a difference no matter what your role. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of the times, yeah, people will think that you have to be the producer, the developer, the artist, um, you know, and work on the finished product, but it, it takes all of us. It, it takes a village <laughs> to yeah. make a game. Um, and, you yeah. know, you contribute in, in some small ways. So, you know, my way is... Um, making sure that customers get their their games through EA Access smoothly. If, if it just shows up in your vault one day, that's cool, I did my job. If, if you notice problems, well then. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, but yeah, it, you can make... You can make impact um, in every position. It's all important, and we all have to work together to, mm -hmm. to make it happen. So whatever you're interested in, you can do it in the gaming industry. Man, Christy, it's like you know what I'm going to ask you, because I was just going to say, <laughs> you know, like, for me, I get sources, I have sources of inspiration everywhere. People, hobbies, passions, everything. Like, dance is a very good example. Um, so how, how do those passions influence your career? Like, the games you make, um, the, the people you're trying to reach, like, how, how do they come into play? Oh. Um, 
I think for me, you know, like I, I do think there's this stereotype in gaming, like you have to play games or you have to be a hardcore, you know, first person shooter person. Um, I think that's kind of the old way of looking at gaming. I think today, and I try to tell, especially women this, because we are definitely like, I play games mostly on my um, Google, Google Pixel phone, right? Like I love playing really quick games, puzzle games, like that's kind of my jam. I love also scary games, so like Bioshock and Doom are kind of like my favorite things because I like being scared. <laughs> but you don't have to be a hardcore gamer. So I think the thing about it for me and like what really drives me every day is like, what is the player experience? If there's one thing that I learned at EA and one thing that I appreciate Andrew Wilson for, it's always focusing on the player experience and what that would be like. Forget about the money part, but like what's this immersive, visceral reaction to gaming that you can have? And so always think about that. Mm -hmm. And it sounds really boring when you're like building operational schedules or talking about servers and capacity and <laughs> all this stuff that you need. But I think about like, gosh, if, if I'm that person at midnight when you know Fortnite launches or whatever game it is, and I turn my Xbox on, like I want to be able to get in and not have a friction experience. Mm -hmm. Like I just want to be able to get in and play. So for mm -hmm. me in my day-to-day -day work, it's, it's always about the player. Even doing data, which is like the, probably one of the driest things you can do, but super exciting um, in the worlds of like AI and, and machine learning. But I think it's about that. So like never forget who your customer is right. and never forget why you're doing it. Because I think that makes a huge difference. And when you have to crunch, like it makes the end seem worth it. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I think to add on to that too, just like, you know, Know, know your audience, um, especially within cartoon, it's like uh, we try and make it a point that all of our games are very narr narrative driven. Mm. So Steven Universe, for example, very raw emotions happening in that show, um, if you're familiar with it, you know, about growth, about relationships, about letting go, about, you know, having, you know, well, consent, you know, uh, just all these different themes are touched upon Steven Universe and we try and like bring that into our games as well. And just really just mm -hmm. drive that narrative, just like what, what can pull in our players, like what do they want to know more about Steven? Um, uh, recently, we released uh, Steven Universe uh, Save the Light on console, um, where we created like a whole new like crystal gem. Um, you know, so it's just like these little things of like what what can we do to like you know bring more or rather bring in the same audience, and even bigger audiences. You know, to make sure that they're having fun with the game, and well, hopefully they'll get to see like the rest of our games as well. Yeah, totally. Uh, so before we open it up to Q and A. Um, thank you again for joining us. Um, and I just wanted to know, like, do you have any last words of advice for our very lovely audience out mm. here? Wow. Um, I know, it's a big question. Yeah, it really is. I wouldn't know how to answer it, so. Um, advice. Um, I guess join the, join the gaming industry. It's really, it's not as scary. You know, it, it's, it's not intimidating to, to get in. Um, we're, we're just like you. Yeah. <laughs> we're just like you. And you know, oh, actually, it's, it's very important for us to um, have representation um, of who we're trying to sell games to. So mm -hmm. we need your voices here, um, you know, at our various companies so that we can make the best games back again for you. Yeah. So please join us. Yeah, I think um, being Latino, uh, especially our Latina in the U.S. today is a really interesting time um, but I like and I'm a fourth generation like Mike I don't speak Spanish natively I had to learn in high school and actually like one of my really gr best friends who's American speaks way better Spanish than I do um, <laughs> but I do think that I bring a unique perspective being fourth generation Mexican American you know born and raised here in California um, and I would like to see our diverse perspectives represented like I love that I have this culture that like has amazing spicy food and loves to dance and it doesn't matter if you know you're from Chile or Mexico or wherever like we have this unique thing that binds us and we are very passionate people um, so I always call myself like the angry Latina sometimes because I am very passionate <laughs> about the things that I believe in <laughs> but I'm like proud of that and I think what I love about Xbox specifically and Microsoft is someone recently told me another woman she's like it's okay to be passionate like, it's okay to be emotional. And I think we need that in our storytelling, too. Like, I think we do have unique perspectives, and we need to bring those to the experiences that we're creating. Because one thing, I, for those of you that are parents, like, I want my daughter to always feel like she belongs. 
no matter where she was born or what she's doing, if she's an athlete or a Tom where all these things, like, it doesn't matter, like, we need those perspectives too. So yes, I agree with Christy, like, come to gaming, bring your unique, diverse perspectives. It will help us make better gaming experiences for everyone. Ditto. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Ditto. Like, like, pretty much Neil, what I was going to say. <laughs> no, yeah, like, honestly, just, just, just be yourself. You know, yeah. as you journey along through whatever avenue, production, art, programming, whatever it is, like, bring your flavor. Like, don't put this facade of, like, oh, I have to act a certain way. I have to be yeah. a gamer girl or, like, a gamer boy or whatever it is that, you know, you think the industry, like, expects you to be. Like, just be yourself. And... You, you'll make so many more like honest connections with people yeah. that way, and yeah, just have fun. Have fun in the gaming industry. Like, there's so much that you can tell like through games. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Thank Gabby. you. Thank you. Your turn. Anyone? Come on. Yes. <laughs> yes. Both of you. We got a mic. So, um, something that recently I've started, it's always been in the back of my mind, but you know, like, as Latinos, um, family is very important. No. Yeah. <laughs> family is uh, very important, yes. and um, the way we work is usually we're either broken or we're really a close-knit group. Um, my father actually runs, like, a, his own company, but he relies on me a lot because of uh, I'm the one that knows English. I went to university. Uh, I know who to talk to and all this stuff. But um, I went and studied for game design. And um, I, I've been trying to get into the industry, but uh, a lot of uh, what I'm seeing is that I'll have to like probably move on, like go somewhere else. I, not just like, it's hard uh, in California, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but it's like uh, I'm just leaving them. Did you ever have to like struggle with like leaving your family to chase your dreams, um, but still like wanting to be there for them and help in any way you can? I know I know I can, but uh, it's not the same as like actually physically being there and helping them. Yeah. And uh, as like most uh, Latino fathers, they're like very strict and quiet. Uh, they won't say <laughs> they won't say that they actually need you, but you know it. And I know it's the same thing with my dad. So um, yeah, basically with family, uh, did you ever have to struggle with like having to leave them uh, to uh, pursue your dreams and goals? Uh, yeah. Uh, so myself. So like I said, I'm from like the DC metropolitan area back on the East Coast. Um, I'm all about family. And when I was first starting on my journey, Latino parents being Latino parents, ¿qué es eso? Like, what's computer game design? Like, yeah, like, what is that? So I had to just really explain, like, guys, like, I have an opportunity, you know, to do what I love and, you know, do art or produce or what, whatever it is, you know, I, I had said back then. Um, <laughs> and, you know, just like, just really just trying to explain that, like, you know, I, st I still love you guys. Like, I'm, I'm not leaving you. Like, currently, I just became an aunt like, a few days ago. And, it was hard. It was hard not being there, like, for my sister, or, you know, my first nephew. But, like, they understand. Like, they understand, like, I'm doing this for my career. I'm doing this, you know, to further, you know, advance, like, you know, my future. And just, like, I just want to grow. And, like, they understand that. So I feel like if you just, you know, sit down with your parents and, or your family and just, you know, explain to them, you know, I'm not leaving you. And I know, like, uh, uh, sorry, to, if this is personal. Are you first generation? Okay. So, like, you know, as a first generation, like, kid, you know, I, I want to make you guys proud. And, like, I want to move around and grow, and that's all I want to, you know, do for you guys. I just want to make you proud. That answers your question. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, hello? Oh, snap. <laughs> hello, so my name is Jesus Maldonado. I'm from We Are Game Heads. I'm from Oakland, California. Woo! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess my question is for you guys is um, knowing in the game industry, there's a lot of um, students that don't have from low income, from color of youth. Right. How do we bring students to the game industry and like help them inspire and share their stories as well? Um, 
So at EA, um, we, we recently started uh, employee resource groups, ERGs, so uh, we're part of uh, Somos EA. And that's actually one of um, our, our pillars, um, well, combined. So we have um, a community pillar um, and a recruitment pillar. So we actually do go out to the communities. Um, we had a, a recent event with uh, Citizen Schools where we brought a whole bunch of, of kids in and had like a mini... Um, I don't know, like studio experience, like not just build a game, but like do everything. So you picked a, so it's sort of like an HR thing. You pick teams, like who's going to be your producer, who's going to be your DD, who's going to be your marketer, and basically came up with a game idea. They couldn't, they didn't have enough time to code because it was one day. Um, but yeah, came up with a budget, a marketing plan, etc. And you know, so we're we're doing things like that, and and even actually trying to expand those types of programs. So. Yeah, I mean, we're trying to do more, so if you have ideas, let us know, and maybe we can make that one of the Somos EA projects. <laughs> I think for us, like, and I know I've had these conversations with other colleagues that are also in the Gaming for Everyone, um, I do think there is a tendency, especially for big corporations, to kind of focus on the elite, like the top of the top, Harvards, the Carnegie Mellons, the MITs. And I do think we're missing out on, you know, some of the kids that don't go to these very... Uh, Ivy League schools. Um, so uh, we're pushing and we're talking about that. I think we're, we're being honest and truthful because like, I think there's qualified candidates ever. Like I grew up in Eastside San Jose. Like I went to UC Davis at the time. You know, I'm a, I'm a young mother and at that time um, UC Davis wasn't the school that it is today in terms of reputation. So there's a part of this too that's like not just about the industry but also about you in your journey and I think perseverance is definitely key. The one thing I wish I could like go back and tell myself when I was 20 and 18, 19 years old is I wish I would have learned how to network. Like I learned way too late in my career how to really network. So I'm doing great now and it's all great. So, but I'm teaching my daughter that, right? She's 20. So I'm teaching her the importance of like making relationships and developing authentic connections because honestly like my my journey into gaming was a result of the hard work that and the relationship mm. that I built in my startup company doing embedded design automation, which has nothing to do with gaming, right? right. So again, like I think if that's the one piece of, of advice I would give you, like forget about your background, because I mean, I don't think there's anything special about me, so if I can do this, you can do this too. It's more about like, I would love to give you all the tools that I wish I would have had back then. So network, make relationships, you're here at GDC, like talk to people, don't be afraid, get cards, Find a mentor, find someone that will be your champion that can inspire you when you're not feeling so great about it and you kind of want to give up on your journey, don't. Like you have to push through, you have to persevere. Well, thank you again for all your great advice. These three lovely ladies will be around, so feel free to ask some questions. I know you, and I saw you. Thank you again. Thank you.